Yeah. How many of the businesses in the recovery space are run by previous addicts? Is that a, a, a lot? A lot of them. A lot. Okay. Yeah. So, like, I'm assuming that has a huge piece in you being able to understand the problem really, really well and actually design um, what seems to be one of the more cutting edge programs to actually be able to help people. Because I think yeah. like the outcome here is not just like, hey, we're collecting rent, right? The outcome yeah. is actually like, no, we are helping people improve their lives, stay sober, and kind of become That's right. highly functioning, productive <laughs> members of society, right? Yeah. And, and so, like, when you think about selling the business, why'd you sell it? From from opening day till transaction day, it was 13 years, two months. And, um, you know, I started when I was 23 years old, and I think I was 35, mm -hmm. right? 35 when I sold it. Um, and everything just has a life cycle. I, I was in New Hampshire. I didn't want to be there anymore. Um, it was a tough, I love it. I still love it. I'm back in it, you know, a little more than a year later, here we are. And, uh, but it was just a tough business to be in. It was emotionally, you know, it, there's a lot that happened there. I, I poured everything that I had into that every single day. I had all my eggs in one basket, which is high risk. Um, and I was surrounded by death, people dying, fentanyl happened. Fentanyl started coming into America about 2012, 2013. What, what, what's going on with that stuff? Cause that seems like the, oh, the yeah, second yeah, coming yeah. of the opioid crisis, like it was opioids uh, and then it was fentanyl. There hasn't been a real bag of heroin on the streets in America in years. What does that mean? Heroin isn't, her there's no heroin addicts anymore. They don't sell heroin, they sell fentanyl. Fentanyl is randomly 50 to 100 times more potent than heroin. It, you know, prior to fentanyl showing up in the country, overdose death is like not that common. It's a once in a, a great while that, mm -hmm. and it's normally through a mixture of other drugs and stuff, fentanyl shows up and it just starts killing people. Really? And yeah, and so, you know, I look back and, and you know, it's funny, you asked me a question earlier and you're like, what was the worst thing you've ever been through? If you isolate that to active addiction, I could answer it. If you put it in my lifespan, it's fentanyl. And not that it affected me directly from using it. I've never actually used it. I've been sober too long, but it killed hundreds of my friends, thousands of my clients. The amount of death that I was surrounded by really honestly fucked me up. And so, I mean, there was 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I'm, I'm showing up to one, two, three funerals a week. Really? Bro, I'm cons I've consoled hundreds of grieving parents. Mm -hmm. If not close to a thousand, I mean, yeah. like there's only so many moms burying their 20 something year old crying through your shirt that like, before it's like, fuck, yeah. you know, it took a piece of me. Um, and so there was just all this complexity of it. I was tired. There was a business sense. There was emotional. There was just time for the next chapter. I've been doing this a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it all came to, to a perfect storm. And I had been ready. I actually transacted four times. Okay. And so I sold minority uh, on three different bites mm -hmm. to a family office mm -hmm. at a scaling valuation and then myself to the same family office uh, and then to take chips off the table and mitigate risk and have money you know, off to the side. And then myself and that family office divested out of it and had a full sale uh, when I sold in December of 21. 